We're down behind uh, Rings Island, next to Ferry Road. And as you can see, this is a very significant stand of Phragmites. If you were to walk straight through these Phragmites, you'd end up in the Atlantic Ocean, probably right where the Merrimack River meets the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the osprey poles beside us. In fact, there's a late nest of osprey you can see on the third pole down. If you get caught in this stand of Phragmites in the evening, and you couldn't get out before dark, you better have a compass. We're heading into this frag stand, and it's pretty good size, and we've got to watch out for tricks. And it, that osprey pole right there, which is the one that doesn't have the bird on, we probably want to keep our eye on that, because that's the only way we're going to be able to find our way back out of it. We've got a lot of wind today. You're going to hear the noise of walking in the frag. Now you can see as we start into this, you can see there's some testiculus that's still growing in this monoculture, but as we head out further and it gets heavier and the vegetation density increases, you're not going to see any native grasses growing. Wow, if you get up to me when you come across, you're going to see a big deer run right here. The deer have been using this to hide themselves to run up and down this Oh, we're getting down in here now. We don't have n any native grasses in this distinct monoculture now. The frags have shielded, they've just outcompeted anything that belongs in a marsh. All this, all this stuff that's cracking under our feet is also last year's thatch. And what this thatch does is it lays down on top of each other and crisscrosses like this and it creates elevation and that elevation traps rainwater and it doesn't like high salinities anyway so this shows you how it creates its own habitat it creates its own environment it's one tough plant look how tall this is way over our head i'll tell you when you walk up here you can actually see where, just because of this little opening, that some of the native marsh grasses are starting to try to revegetate. And that's why what we're doing is so significant, it's so important what we're doing in trying to get rid of these large monocultures so some of the native grasses can reestablish themselves. I mean, when you walk up there, you can see some of the patents just trying to grab on again. Can you see how thick that is, Rick? Look at it. Oh man, what we need to do is open that up so we can get some native growth again. Imagine the fire that could, could be in this area. Imagine the fire if this ignites this fall. <laughs> and you know what's really wild? I've seen it worse than this. I mean, we're only in, I don't know, Eight tens, elevens. How would that be for a tumble down the bank? And... How's that? <laughs> yeah. Another day in the frags. There's nothing growing here. All our native vegetation is definitely just outcompeted. The sun's taken away. It's created its own habitat by all the thatch lying on top of each other and trapping fresh water. I mean, this plant, I'll tell you, when you talk about danger in, in the reeds, this is a perfect example. This has taken over this marsh. We've, we've got to find ways to try to knock this plant back or we're going to lose all our significant wildlife values because this, this plant takes everything away. I got to be honest with you. What you're looking at, what you're looking at right now is the plant I hate the most. <laughs> this is my enemy. This is what I've dedicated a large part of my life and Peter Fippen and Greg Moore. I'll tell you what, we have got to be able to stabilize our marsh and fight back the invasives because the marsh can't do it by itself. When the wind blows that Phragmites, they almost seem pretty. We just walked only five or six hundred yards into that and it was so thick, it was hard walking, there was no native vegetation underfoot. 
it is totally taking away our broad marsh, our broad marsh that is so valuable. Our marsh needs help. And our great marsh cannot do it by itself. We need to help the great marsh. This is an invasive, destructive plant, and we need to bring it under control. At least we're back out where there is some marsh grasses and some goldenrod and some ultraflora, but look, this guy still wants to follow me. He's still staying attached. That's really thick. If you can pan back over that at all, you can see the height of that. I mean, we've got to do something to protect our marsh against these invasives because, like I've always said, the marsh right now can't do it on its own.